activate the stabilizer first to bring the bones in the correct alignment, then work eccentric lengthening of the big muscles. Hello everybody, welcome to the Hustle and Fit interview series. I have another great interview for you guys. If you're looking to grow, build, and transform your life, you're gonna absolutely love this interview. I have the pleasure of interviewing today, Daniel Chan. He's the co-founder of Body Tree Group. He's a Pilates teacher. He was fitness best elite Pilates instructor of 2017. Uh, he's the creator of the Prehab Trainer. He's a certified basic sports massage therapist. He's, uh, he's specialized in injury and sports injury, and he's also a certified personal trainer. So Daniel is the go-to person when you're really trying to build a strong and powerful body. So welcome, Daniel. How's it going? Thank you. Uh, it's been great. Um, I guess we have been doing what we could in this uh, lockdown. <laughs> Staying at home and coaching coaching clients from uh, the virtual uh, platform via using Zoom and so on. Oh man, I know it's everybody's getting into this now. We're all having no choice now. <laughs> so yeah, so it, what, it really you challenges in? your, cre it really challenges your creativity on trying to uh, train someone with home furnitures. <laughs> 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 that's so true that's so true so so what got you into this whole uh like fitness world like what, what's your story oh i i basically was quite a uh non-active growing up so while waiting for my o level result i decided to totally transform my body from a nerd to a <laughs> active person so i began training weight since 17 and then I got, I fell in love with it and I actually uh, quit my uh, engineering job to become a personal trainer. That's a big switch. And then from there is <laughs> when I, yeah. But because in the old days when we were doing uh, weight training, it was the no pay, no gain. Therefore, you are always thinking about trying to pump and build bigger muscles. But in, because of that, you, you lose mobility. And because of that, I got injuries and so on. That's what Pilates was introduced to me to help me regain my mobility. And then again, I fell in love with uh, Pilates. I started to integrate uh, teaching Pilates into my personal training sessions. And then from there, I began to teach Pilates full-fledged. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. So then what, why did you choose Pilates? Like why did Pilates become your, you know, one of the major things that you started to focus on? So a lot of people are only exposed to Pilates mat work, which you see in commercial gym. Uh, those are done with body weight on the mat, but it's actually not the, the real Pilates or it's not the complete Pilates. Pilates is actually done on uh, spring loaded apparatus. And the machine really looks like the gym machines itself, minus the plates and so on and so forth. So the, I don't view it as Pilates as like yoga where you are in certain poses. Pilates is actually a concept of movement about how controlled you are in moving certain joints. Like in bodybuilding, you focus on the bicep curling and how we are bending the elbows. It's the same as Pilates. Pilates is basically telling you how to move your joints at, for certain movements. So you apply Pilates into running, you apply Pilates into gym, you apply Pilates basically to anything. So it's not restricted by the apparatus. It's more of a concept of movement. So I chose Pilates because I could still do weight training using Pilates technique. Oh, that's interesting. And and what is what is the specific benefits of doing it? You know, adding that into your workout routine. Like, what does it help? So, you know, I'm I'm a guy who's trying to get bigger, stronger. How does that help me directly do that? So, a lot of uh, my friends who are doing weight training, they come back to me telling them they have tendonitis, for example, the tricep tendonitis or shoulder impingement. And when that happens, it actually prevents them from doing the the work of sports they like. 
they have to either rest for a few months or avoid certain movement, and that will actually restrict their mobility. So Pilates actually help regain your mobility while maintaining strength. So the difference between flexibility and mobility is in flexibility, your arms could be passively stretched by something. But in sport, you have to basically engage your muscles to move. But you might be restricted because there are muscles that are tight or preventing you from moving. So when we talk about mobility, it's basically having active muscle engagement to move to the maximum range of motion. For example, let's take a shoulder press. So a lot of people is trying to build a very nice shoulder, but because they are so tight in the legs, they are ending up like that. So instead of fully extending the arms overhead, they are actually doing a short range. Yeah, but it might get bigger and more tense, but over time, you are actually preventing the joints from going to a full range, which might promote uh, injuries, inflammations, or even tendinitis. Oh, interesting. And does it have any, does it have an effect? So like, let's say for instance, I'm doing the shoulder press and I'm not getting the full range of motion. Will that also sh um, show up in the way my muscles look? Like, yeah, if it, it does. Oh, okay. So if, because you're not, basically you're not getting into a full range. Can you imagine if, imagine uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing bicep curls, but in the entire 10 years, he's just doing this range. <laughs> I doubt his bicep will really grow. He will really think about, he will always say get into that full range. In bodybuilding, is always talking about that full range. But sadly, because of the muscle imbalance, not everyone is getting into that full range. Oh. So Pilates is basically big, uh, talking about uh, strengthening the stabilizers to really keep the bones into the correct position so that the bigger muscles could move rather than using just the bigger uh -huh. muscles to both move and stabilize. So basically, we have a superficial layer, which is like the pecs, the delts, the lats, while the smaller muscles are like your uh, serratus anterior, your lower trap, they actually move the scapula into a correct position so that the other bigger muscle can function. And Pilates is all about working those small stabilizer muscles. Wow. So what are, what are your top exercises or uh, routines uh, that somebody can do to increase their mobility um, and flexibility? Uh, it's actually more of a protocol that we like to work on. So of course, first you warm up dynamically so that the muscles can be contract and stretch. And then followed by, I would like to do, uh, mostly do eccentric work. So a lot of us, uh, start the exercise by doing shortening exercises, pumpers, so we call that pumpers. So like for example, if you're doing bicep curl, if your focus is the curling part, we are actually for forcing the bicep to shorten all the time. If I'm doing quads, I do not want to do leg extension, you know, the machine where you like, shorten the legs, we will do natural knee extension. So when you do leg extension, you are basically trying to shorten this. And then once you do leg extension when you squat, because this is already shortened, you might be causing the patella to compress into the joint. So instead of that, we do uh, extension using more stretch. So from here, you're basically trying to extend to create length in the quad while building strength. So wow. all our protocol is activate the stabilizer first to bring the bones in the correct alignment, then work eccentric lengthening of the big muscles before we work the concentric. Oh, that's interesting. And then what are some tips in terms of building more, um, uh, like uh, building muscle and reducing fat? What are some of your tips in terms of that? Well, it's very subjective because as you know, uh, you can exercise for all you want, but if you're, you suck at diet, <laughs> you take high <laughs> sugar, you take high fat, it's going to ruin your, your fat percentage. So at the end of the day, you can exercise for all you want. You can build more muscles to increase the metabolism. But if you do not eat healthily, you are not going to get as lean or as ripped as you like. <laughs> what, what, what would actually be one thing that you like to eat like that really has a large, um, that's really good and nutritious? Like what's one of the things that you eat that, is, that helps you out with that? 
I'm actually quite um, quite am, uh, am, uh, I eat normal. I eat as a lo local normal Singaporean. I'm not crazy over <laughs> that you only have broccoli and breast meat. You have to prepare your meals because I'm quite busy and quite lazy. So I basically have like salad uh, with chicken breast for lunch. My first meal is a lunchtime. I kind of do the uh, intermediate fasting. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I only have my first meal at about uh, 12. So it's either uh, salad with, uh, uh, with protein. And then I move on to dinner time with a very normal uh, local cuisine like uh, noodles or rice with some vegetables and meat and that's all. Maybe in between I have a, uh, a snack bar, like a chocolate bar. <laughs> oh, snack. <laughs> yeah. But I think more importantly, as long as you're keeping yourself active throughout the day, because as a fitness profession, you'd be moving around, so it's not as bad. So sometime in the evening, you can have a treat. Rather than you try not to eat anything at all, then over the weekend, you really spoil yourself with ice creams and high sugar stuff. That makes sense, yeah. And because so like, we are, yeah, and yeah, and because we are in Asia, our serving size are rather small. Yeah, I remember when I was in uh, U US for um, uh, a conference, and we had dinner, and their dinner was was equivalent to our two days meal. <laughs> it's like whoa. <laughs> I think the key thing is because our portions are small, that's why we are as you are leaner than normal. Got it. Okay. <laughs> and actually, um, one thing, just kind of talking about that, um, in, in terms of uh, portion sizes, I guess do you do you? I guess you don't you don't really manage that. Like you don't do you actually like say okay, I'm going to eat only this amount of carbs, or, or you don't do all that. Uh, how do you structure your 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 uh, sizes that you're eating? I don't uh, structure them by weighing skills or actual portion because of how the meal are sold. I usually buy my meal rather than prepare them because I don't cook. But instead, I portion them according to my activity. So if, if I'm planning to do my uh, 13K run the next morning, I make sure I have enough carbs uh, the night before the evening so I allow myself to have the normal portion of rice, and the vegetables and stuff. But if I'm not doing any cardio the next day, I would usually just have uh, very little uh, carbs in the evening or uh, no carbs at all. My carbs maybe come from natural food like potatoes or fruits rather than uh, the refined flour uh, stuff. Ah, uh, okay. And actually, for because uh, I know I had a friend of mine ask me this. Um, do you feel like there is too much cardio? Or like, let's say you're trying to get bigger in size. Do you feel like someone can have too much cardio? Or do you feel like, um, you know, that's not actually true? It really depends on your goal. Uh, are you trying to uh, build more slow twitch muscle? Or are you trying to build more fast twitch muscle for size? So for us, we teach more based on function and what are you using that muscle for? Uh, we, I'm not in the field where the size for you to go into a bodybuilding show or competition. For me, we, most of our clientele are people who are in the uh, performance world, like the golf players, the swimmer, the Ironman, the uh, triathletes. So we don't deal with people who are trying to look good physically, but we are fo more focused on trying to make you function better. Does uh, that make sense? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah so that actually makes I a lot of would sense. Not yeah, so I, I, I do not have the challenge of trying to get someone telling me I'm trying to get big or should I run or not. More importantly is why do you need to run? Are you playing <laughs> soccer? Do you need to run faster for the ball or anything else? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, I've seen your aesthetic, so I think the way you look is perfect. Like if you <laughs> very svelte and cut, so I think a lot of people... I'm aging, yes, I'm aging. 
No, no, you're looking great for that age. So awesome, man. So I, I think a lot of people would love just even being able to look similar to what you're doing. So I think that's amazing. And I, and I like the fact that you're, you're, you're saying functional movement and being able to, to, cause most people are not necessarily trying to become like Arnold Schwarzenegger all day long. You, you know, we need to be able to pick up our kids or, you know, do things in our lives. So just yeah, looking yeah. at healthy is, is kind of the, the, and being able to move is, is, is the primary focus. So yeah. I think that's really important. So I guess what are some of the, is based on my history, but when I was in the bodybuilding days, in the old days, I, I was self-taught. So before I was certified, I was doing a lot of heavy stuff and got a lot of shoulder injuries and knee injuries and back injuries. I look great, but I move like an old man. So I didn't like that. So that's why functional movement to me now is the priority, the number one thing versus aesthetic. Uh, that makes sense. And if you look good because you are exercising well, you function better, that's a bonus. Ah, uh, nice. I like that. So, okay, what would be some of the common, because it sounds like, you know, you made some mistakes in the, in the beginning. What were some of the mistakes uh, that people typically make when they're first getting into creating that great body? Like something that you notice time and time again, your clients always come in and they start off and it's the same mistake. What do you, what do you find of those mistakes that people always make? The mistake is basically uh, awareness. They are not aware of the alignment of the body. And a lot of time, uh, the mirror doesn't uh, give them a sense of uh, uh, awareness test because at certain exercises, you can't be looking at the mirror as you're doing the exercise, like a bench press. There's no mirror for you to check. So for someone who is really practicing themselves, especially now yeah, at home, there's no one guiding you. The best person or rather the best coach would be your hand phone. So uh, I'm not narcissistic. I do not take my a video of myself all day, but more importantly, the handphone actually assists me to check my alignment so that I know what I perceive that I'm doing is exactly what is happening. So a lot of injury happen is because you have gotten used to the compensation of how you avoid certain movement because of the tightness of restriction. You've been compensating it and you might not even be aware that you're doing that. So if, if you could catch yourself doing do certain exercise by filming yourself while doing the exercise, you can actually see a lot of uh, misalignment. And with that, it really changed the uh, mindset of how you should move or what you're thinking about. And that would really prevent a lot of injuries. Wow. That's awesome. Man, some great stuff, Dan, man. You, Daniel, you've given me a lot of great information. I think a lot of people at home have also learned a lot of things. Um, where can people find you? Like, where can people get involved with what you're doing? Well, they can actually check out my uh, Instagram where I share uh, weekly on exercises like how to improve your mobility, uh, stretches that you could do at home, on the bed, on the floor, with a chair, especially now that we are in lockdown. So things that you can be done at home. So, so also we have some uh, live classes that they can do or attend. So they can actually message me uh, at uh, my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram name is Daniel Chan dot Body Tree. So my company is basically called Body Tree Group, and uh, Body Tree Group is made up of uh, four sister companies: uh, Body Tree Academy, where we train trainers, we teach teach uh, people to become Pilates teacher. We also provide a uh, fitness education for personal trainers to in, advance their education and knowledge. We also have uh, the Pilates studio itself called Pilates Body Tree. The other companies is for women's wellness. And the other one is Body Tree Ballet, where we help recondition injured ballerinas. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's, that's very So neat. to that's find awesome. me, yeah. So basically, just look for me at, on Instagram. If they don't have Instagram, you can just email me at danielchan at bodytreegroup.com. Awesome. Okay, I have one last question. I always like to end the interview with this question. Okay, if you had to leave, you're leaving on, up, you're going on a spaceship and you're leaving the Earth tomorrow and you could leave the, Earth, you could leave the world with one health-based tip or one thing of importance that you've learned in your health journey, 
what would be that one thing you would want to leave to the people uh, before you go? Oh, listen to your body. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people are still not being able to tell the difference between uh, soreness and strain. And, and if they continue to work out or exercise thinking that, oh, it's just muscle soreness, they continue, the strain will become an injury eventually. So they just have to awesome. learn how to listen to the body. Learn this, that's some wise advice, very wise advice. I've learned that lesson myself. <laughs> Honestly, thank you so much, Daniel, for coming out today and, and spending this time with us. You need to follow Daniel's Instagram, check out the Body Tree Group, and you know, get as much information um, because he is the person that's really going to transform your body and your mind and your spirit. So once again, Daniel, thank you so much for helping us today. And uh, for the rest of you guys, have an awesome day.